authenticity is a delicate thing. It doesn't mean say whatever you think and feel. Right. Right. <laughs> you're, you know, the, to, it, it, you're, you're not really on a job interview, but if you were on a job interview, you don't just say everything you think and feel. You put your best foot forward. Okay, so you're getting to know someone. You want to put your best foot forward. And I would say after 25 years of marriage, you still want to put your best foot forward mm -hmm. because your best foot is who you are. And we have to recognize there's things that we need to, we don't have to share everything with our partners. We exclude from sharing with them anything that's going to make them feel unsuccessful. <laughs> and if it's a complaint, certainly that's going to come across as he failed you. So you still can share it, but you do it from the perspective of not that often, okay, not that often, and give it a few days to think about it it's going to cost. Okay. It's like how many rewards does he get versus how many complaints does he get to keep, to feel successful? So you let it sit for a while. One of my friends, he teaches a, a wonderful class, a Warren Farrell on communication. And he has women write out their complaints, not sharing with their partner and then picking one. Uh, and to do on Saturday morning, every Saturday morning, they share one complaint each. He, he has to listen to her complaint fully and freely. So giving you time to sit on these things reduces the charge of it as well, as mm -hmm. opposed to just throwing out complaints and expressing negativity and so forth. But what you can do is you, you can, you, you don't want to hold back sharing what you think about the world, what you think. And uh, what you think about things in the news, what you think about your job, what you think about your life, what you think about your dreams. And a lot of times we don't want to share what we think because we're afraid somebody won't approve of it. Mm -hmm. And so we don't. And that's a, that will kill attraction. You're becoming somebody else and expecting them to be attracted to you. But that's not you. Who you are is going to be the attractive person for the right person for you. And is like learning to feel comfortable sharing what you think as opposed to being a people pleaser, checking out, you know, what, what would they think about it? But boldly sharing, well, I think this, and then somebody else go, how could you think that? Or why would you think that? Now you can create intimacy by simply, if you're doing this with a man, then you go, oh, well, tell me what you think. And then he talks a little bit and you say, well, that makes sense. Well, that's a good idea. Well, you're right about that. Well, I hadn't thought about that at all. And I really want to understand that a bit better. And now let me explain to you what I think more. And you give a man the experience of having a intellectual stimulating conversation without some woman being hurt or taking offense at what he says or being offended by him basically making you wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, what, you want to develop your conversation skills so that you can have different points of view. It makes you so attractive without being at war. And you can kind of see in our culture today how crazy it is, how mm -hmm. you know people are so hypersensitive to taking offense at things or being hurt by things. And it's almost become a part of our vernacular to say, well, that hurts. And we just, it's a go-to place of that hurts. What happens is our self-esteem is so low that we get, we demand perfection from others. We take offense at things. And, you know, to take offend, to take offense is to offend. This old saying, you know, it's, it's you minimize, you minimize, you say, okay, let that go by. Let me say something else. Otherwise you, you, you create a minefield that men do not want to have to dodge Okay, what do I say that's going to upset her? What do I say that's going to upset her? And if a man does say something upsets you, just change the subject. Mm, See, these that's are like a good technique. There's communication skills that people need. So he says something offensive. You go, oh, I, I never thought about that before. Or that's another way of looking at it. And then change the subject. Don't go talk about how that made you feel. And how could he say that? And get into, you know, negativity. You want to have a positive dating experience. And that's why dating can be such a great possi possibility for people, particularly for women. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really big on women never pursuing men, mm -hmm. but you start with the men that are pursuing you. And 
so that you don't have this need to try to win them over. Mm. And then you practice being authentic, authenticity, where you can express what you think. You can also talk about what you feel, but not what you feel about them. Okay. And not <laughs> it's the whole feeling word uh, really makes things <clears throat> Here, here's the deadly phrase, I feel like, now you'll, if you talk to an adolescent girl, it's so adolescent, it's so immature. All they say is, well, I feel like this and I feel like that. And I feel like is in every sentence they say. And it's it's a awakening of self-identity, okay? So it's a part of process we go through. Uh, but it's, it's non-logical. Okay, so you, you want to have a logical conversation. If you're going to talk about your feelings, then your feelings are not, I feel like, I feel that. Okay, that's okay. Or I feel frustrated. Now, to me, the best language of feelings with a man is if you say, I feel like there's so much traffic, or I feel like we're not connecting enough, or I feel like you're too busy for me, that's just huge amount of dump. OK, but you could say instead you can make it clean and crisp. It's not a big deal, but I feel frustrated because I'm not spending time enough with you. I love being with you. Or I was so disappointed the other day because I thought you're in a call. And it's not a big deal, but I just wanted you to know how much I enjoy being with you. See, you bring a, a little emotion into it. Emotion is estrogen. Men are drawn to you because you've got estrogen. And unfortunately, when men have too much estrogen, they're not drawn to you. Mm -hmm. These are, this is why that motivation goes away inside of men is once they have you, then just being around you, if you're happy, he's feeling his estrogen. He's got kind of a balance of estrogen going there. And that's why we need nudges. You got to motivate us by asking us to do things and, mm -hmm. and not sabotaging the motivation by demanding things of us. And nobody wants to, I don't want to, I should never demand on you to be happy or to, to only have positive things to say. I'm not, I can't demand that. I can like that. I can want that. And that's all I'm saying, what, what men would like and want. But when you don't have something positive to say, although what I try to do is if I don't have something positive to say, don't say it. <laughs> Uh, I've succeeded in doing that in my marriage, which is why it lasted 34 years until my wife passed. Uh, I just, if I have something negative to say, I don't say it. And I go off and I do something to make myself feel good. And that negativity goes away. And then there's the practicalities of you've got to make decisions together. You disagree on things. There's financial decisions. There's children decisions and all those hot topics you approach them from the point of view, this is my best friend. You know, this isn't a person. I'm going to try to be really nice and discuss this. 